So we're on part two here of uh, RET screen, and there's a few things that we need to know. So what we're going to do, I just want to quickly show you that we started over here on part one under the start, and we figured out all of this data, and we're going to import that data now into the energy model. So that's where we started off here. And then the third page is tools. And let's say we want to do some unit conversions, for example. So let's go over here, and we need to know what volume it is. Let's say we have 600 liters. How many gallons is that? Or how many gallons do I have to convert over into something else? So let's say I need 100 gallons. Well, I can kind of rough that down and give me, I can kind of make a rough guess and go the other way with it. So it's okay here. So let's say 500 liters is equal to 132, 475 is just about 100. 125 and 300 then is just about at 80. So we're going to keep that just the back of our mind here as we do this. Here we go. Red screen is defaulted because we set we want a solar thermal. One of the more popular means of solar thermal systems that we know about today is going to be on a swimming pool heating. Well, that's not what we're looking to do. We're going to do a solar hot water system. Now, daily home use, we're going to create this to gallons per day and we're going to set the temperature to Fahrenheit and then we're going to select this base load. This base is not industrial, this is going to be a residential type system. So let's see what values we have. Now in this case it's going to be an apartment. I could choose it as a house but we'll leave it as is. Now we're going to go to how many units. In this particular case there are four units and the percent of occupancy we're going to go with 100 percent. So that means, and this is one thing about red screen that I have no clue about why it converts this to liters per day even though I want gallons and I set everything to gallons. Fine. We're going to go back over to my data, and they say, how many gallons do we need? Well, we have 678 liters, so we'll go 678. We'll find out what we need, and that's 180 gallons. So I'm going to round that up to from 179 to 180. So that means I need to store 180 gallons every day. Now, there's some factors involved here. So in essence, when we talk solar thermal systems, the gallons per day for total occupancy usage in this case is about typically we say about 20 gallons of hot water per person per day. So in this case they're gonna and I'm not exactly sure how the equations of RET screen are when it comes to apartments as opposed to the residential section but we're giving ourselves about 180 gallons of storage on site to hold that. And so let's just keep that that if we build a new system with solar thermal let's keep it at 180. Now the temperature that we wish to keep that water at let's just keep it at a mild pace of 115 degrees Fahrenheit. That's typical. Operating days per week, let's make it 7, 7. So now supply temperature is going to import the data from the first page. We're going to say that the water temperature coming into this apartment building, our latitude that we selected for in central Illinois in the Bloomington Normal region, is going to have a high and a low water temperature of 43 to 61 degrees. Now we're going to propose this incremental cost. Now we haven't saved any energy because we haven't decided on what to select in here. What we're going to do first is just very roughly, now there's some things that I've learned over the years and I'll just relay them to you now that you can get as involved or not involved with this as you want, but simply stated for every gallon that we wish is about one square foot of collector space. So for example, if I have a tank that I need to store 180 gallons, I should have a solar thermal system that has about 180 square foot. Very, very rough we know that the typical cost of insulation is two hundred dollars per square foot so if I take two hundred dollars multiply it by 180 I would have a total cost in this case now this is going to be high of about thirty six thousand dollars that's the incremental cost now don't get everybody excited about it it's not going to be that bad it really won't be we are estimating at a very high cost right now we will make it more acceptable for us as we go down what we want to do is come over here are we gonna have a location where is the location going to be now after this video we're gonna come back and look at the location and the wherewithal but let's just say a good design is about 15 degrees plus the latitude that you're at so in central Illinois we're at 40.2 degrees of latitude I add 15 degrees to that that gives me a total slope of 55 degrees now the azimuth is the angle at which it's facing due south now most humans would naturally say that from a compass reading 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees back to 360 facing north is the right way to say it. So I would say 0 degrees is due north. And that's true until you get to solar. 
Solar, on the other hand, has this wonderful concept that zero degrees is due south. So if I want to place this section at due south perfectly, it would be zero degrees. Why is that? Well, we know that we need the sun. And without the sun, we're not going to have a much, a very successful solar thermal system. So there we go. That's why we do zero degrees. Next, what we're going to shoot for is how much systems are we going to design. And that's what we're going to cover in the next section.